Hey guys, welcome back to another Warframe video where today we are looking at how to capture six Hydralists solo in one night cycle as Vault. I have done a few of these guides in the past, however this is the first one I've been able to do for a legitimate solo run. Uh, the devs have made the game much easier in that respect, so hopefully this will be informative and help you guys to, yeah, basically guarantee you six Hydralist captures in one night thereby netting you 18 arcanes total. Um, so yeah, I just want to run through this build real quick, and then we'll get into a commentated run. Uh, I also want to point out as well, I would say that this is a budget build. However, whilst all of the mods and everything in this build are obtainable, there are umbral mods. There is an umbral former use on the vault. Not that it's necessary. If you've been watching the Warframe done efficiently playthrough, we have done a six cap with a much cheaper build than you are about to see. And if you would like to see that build, go ahead and I think it's tw episode 12.5 of the Warframe done efficiently playthrough. Go ahead and have a look at that because that is kind of the cheapest you can do it. And it was about 100 total hours in game that we had in order to get to that point. Um, so yeah, it's, it's very doable. So yeah, we'll run through the build. I also want to point out I'm running Archon Shards on this build. These are not necessary at all. Again, go and have a look at episode 12.5 or whichever one it was. Uh, and you'll see we didn't need those for that either. So yeah, we'll start off with our Vault Prime build right here. Uh, we are, like I said, running quite a few former. We have an Aura former on as well, just for my sake, for the other vault builds that i'm also running on my other configs uh, and then we're also using uh, two arcanes here we've got nullifier and energize nullifier you can farm up just from the terror list and i would recommend getting a full arcane nullifier before trying to do this it will make your life so much easier um, so either buy it with platinum it's about 60 or 70 i believe for a full nullifier or farm it up from the terror list if you're just farming terror lists you should be able to do in excess of kind of you know 10 to 13, 14, even 15 in a single night cycle. So you should be able to farm it up relatively quickly. The other things to note about this build, uh, we're running Holster Amp as the uh, the aura here. This is going to be important uh, a bit later on, you'll see. We're swapping between melee and also our primary weapon in order to get extra damage, which is also why we're running Vigorous Swap as well. And then we're also running uh, Shock Trooper to augment our first uh, shock ability right here that's going to apply increased electricity de electricity damage to our rubico excuse me um, and then we're also running adaptation for increased durability and eclipse has also been put on using the helmet for increased damage someone did point out in a video uh, i did a while ago that the uh, the enhanced beta or the enhanced graphics engine which used to improve the damage of eclipse quite significantly has now been patched i did do a bit of testing on it and i'm pretty confident that yeah that has now been patched so we're not going to be running the enhanced graphics engine either way um but just so you guys are aware that's not a thing anymore if you've seen my previous video about that uh but yeah it's just a quick and nasty damage buff which is why we're using it we've also got rush on for the increased arc wing speed which is going to be really important for when we start gathering lures um, so yeah, that's kind of the build for Vault. Just base it around duration and strength with a bit of neutral efficiency or better, and you should be good. For our Rubico here, we're not running uh, Zenith. This is a sort of budget build, I guess, in that respect. We're not using any milestone weapons or rewards, such as Prime Shorefooted or the Zenith. The Zenith is a very uh, popular Eidolon hunting tool because it allows you to shoot through the floor. If you have a long spawn, as we call it, uh, Hydralist or Gantalist, you are able to shoot the uh, the limb the first limb so much faster with the zenith uh, which is why a lot of people uh, prefer using it uh, and it basically guarantees you synovia shots because you can just shoot straight through any hitbox that's there and hit it so that's why people prefer to use the zenith but we're using the rubico i think it's the second best thing so let's take a look at the build for this no riven mods at all on this uh, we're running primary merciless but this isn't actually necessary i'm only using it for the increased reload speed We've then got Ambush Optics for the negative zoom on the Rubico, which is really useful for this. Uh, and then everything else is geared around critical chance, critical damage, as well as radiation damage, as you can see here. Radiation damage is very good for taking down Eidolons, so definitely have this on. Vile Acceleration for a bit of attack speed, and then also Amalgam Serration instead of Serration for that increased sprint speed, which is going to help our Arcwing mobility. Also make sure you have your, uh, your multi-shot mods on, these are going to help massively. 
For our secondary weapon, we're running the Nell Prime. This is going to help us take down the Eidolons at the end, so doing the final capture or kill shot. Uh, you can see I haven't actually maxed this build out at all, but this is easily enough to uh, to take it down very quickly. You could replace Heated Charge with Primed Heated Charge. You could max out Prime Target Cracker, as you can see I haven't. And you could even put uh, an Exilus Adapter on here if you so chose. Um, we're running Secondary Deadhead. This one is actually a bit important as it provides plus 30% to the Headshot Multiplier. You can pick one of these up for about 10 to 20 Platinum if you were trading. Or if you're running Steel Path a lot, you've probably got one of these already just picking it up passively. Um, so yeah, that's the build for the Nell. For our melee weapon, you need a gun blade, recommended. Um, I am running the Sarper here, however I would prefer to run the Vastalok, it's just that we haven't actually got to that point in our playthrough where we've come across one yet. However, if on uh, your gun blade you go ahead and put Shattering Impact, this is going to be used to strip the armor of the Eidolon and help us do more damage to it, and you'll see us using that throughout the run, or see me using it throughout the run. Um, and then yeah, everything else geared to attack speed. If you have any more attack speed mods, throw them on. The faster you can do it, the better. Um, for our focus tree, we are running Madurai. Easily the best and most useful for hunting Eidolons. If we take a look at some of the abilities, increase operator and physical damage by 30%. 100% amp critical damage for 20 seconds on switching to operator. Avoid strike, which although it only comes around every 40 seconds, very useful for taking down first shields as it does a huge stack of damage. Um, so yeah, make sure you use that sparingly and at the right time. Uh, void fuel allows us to have increased uh, weapon or operator weapon damage. And then the other important ones here are going to be contamination wave. This is going to also increase our operator's damage and also sling strength, which can improve your opera your warframe uh, abilities. Sorry, so that will increase the damage on your uh, your shields, on your eclipse, and on your shock. Uh, well, yeah. So all important. Um, you don't necessarily need all of these unlocked. If you are going for kind of one or two, definitely go for Void Flow and Void Siphon first, as these are going to assist with Void Strike. Definitely the ones to get to begin with. Uh, everything else is neither here nor there, really. Um, so yeah, that's our focus tree. I might go into a bit more detail on this in a separate video, but for now, hopefully, obviously, if you guys just have this stuff unlocked, then that should be fine. Let's then take a look at our Parazon, where we are running one particular mod that is important, which is runtime, plus 75% sprint speed for 15 seconds after hacking. This does apply to your Arcwing, which is why it's very important for gathering lures and getting over to the Eidolon at the start of the fight. One thing I'm going to note right here is that I am not going to be going into lure fast charging for this video. If you want to go and see that, I'm going to put a link to the the, the video uh, the, where I did the guide on that in the description below um so go and have a look at that i'm gonna need to be talking about other things during this run so yeah just bear that in mind everything else here is going to be kind of you know quality of life auto breach for me this is going to be useful in this run because i am only using one cipher per run and we'll explain that in a second live wire is also another one i like to use because it just helps with crowd control for enemies around the lures you could use the mod that allows you to go invisible. I haven't actually picked it up yet, so yeah, we'll need to grab that at some point in our run. But for now, uh, we're running live wire just to um, yeah, just to control the enemies around the lures. For our sentinel or pet, we are running carrier. You don't need to run carrier. You can run any sentinel. I wouldn't recommend running a live pet such as a Volpe Viola, a Cavat, um, or a Kubrow, mainly because your Proper amp, which is what we're going to be using, can uh, intersect with the hitbox on them and go off prematurely, which will cause you all kinds of issues and might even knock you over and will add m huge amounts of time to your run, which is not what we want. So on our carrier, just put on, you know, the standard Vitality, Vacuum, uh, Ammo Case, Regen, Guardian, whatever. Um, it doesn't really matter. And on your weapon, if you have any Vigilante mods spare, go ahead and throw those on because they will stack up with the one that's on your primary weapon. So you can get up to a 30% chance to enhance critical hits from your primary weapon, which is really useful. If we take a look then at our gear, the main gear that we're going to be using is energy pads as well as ciphers. Like I said, I'm only going to be using one cipher per run. So in total per night, I'm going to be using six ciphers. Um, and for our energy pads, you're probably looking to use around 10 in the entire night, uh, especially if you have Energize. If you don't have Energize, you are going to be using more energy pads without a doubt. Um, and then the other useful tools, On Call Crew, definitely recommend getting your hands on this. It will 
drastically improve your quality of life when hunting Eidolons. Uh, you want to be getting a Tenet Psychron or similar for your uncle crewmate as it has infinite ammo and it is going to massively help you clean up Vonvalists and charge lures and we'll take a look at that when we come to commentate on the run. Uh, the only other thing here that we're going to be using is Necromex Summon. We're going to use it once right at the end of the run to jam the gate open so that we can make a nice and quick escape. Uh, but that's about it. Obviously Arcwing Launcher as well. I should point that out. Um, that's very important. Um, for our Arcwing, now that we said it, we are running Itzel. Make sure to have Hyperion Thrusters on there for the increased flight speed. You can see mine's not maxed out. It doesn't matter all that much um, if it's not maxed out. But as long as it's high up, then you should be fine. Cold Snap for uh, our Cosmic Crush Augment. Um, that's going to help freeze Vonvalists in place. Energy Amplifier, again, increasing the range at which you can suck Vonvalists in. And whilst we are talking about it, I just want to make you guys aware that my Intrinsics, uh, let's just have a look here, are up at at least 8. You want to get your Intrinsics to at least 8, because if we take a look here at rank 8, you get all of the lovely Arcwing stuff, so... Increased Arcwing uh, ability power by 25%, 20% range, all of that good stuff. And then piloting, you also get increased Arcwing speed and you also get in, uh, reduced Arcwing blink cooldowns as well at rank 8. So do spend a bit of time trying to get all of your intrinsics up to rank 8. It's definitely worth it. However, not totally necessary as my episode 12.5 will attest to. You guys will be able to see there. So... That's it for kind of the main frame build, as it were. Let's take a look quickly at our operator. Uh, here we go. So for my operator, I am running Elevate and Vigor. You could swap Vigor for probably Magus Melt would be a good alternative. Uh, if you've got your Unairu and your, not your Unairu, sorry, your Vazarin unbound uh your way bound uh, on your focus tree to get your increased health i'm running magus vega just because i have it and magus melt strictly isn't necessary as you will probably see um and then elevate for our durability it helps us to regenerate health um so we can just go in and out of transference over and over again and restore health and we should be fine for our amp we are using a 177 amp um so if we take a look that is going to be a proper scaffold certus brace and replac prism so the certus brace and the proper scaffold you can get from uh cetus sorry not cetus the other one fortuna <laughs> from little duck and the replac prism you can get from cetus um once again i believe that we did the six cap with the one two three this isn't actually a one three three it's a one two three it's just misnamed um so yeah go ahead and have a look at 12.5 i can't quite remember but quite possibly um, but yeah, we're going to be using 177 for this, and there are going to be a few little things you want to look out for during the run with regards to the Proper, which is going to be our primary tool for taking down the shields, that alongside the Replac. When it comes to taking down the Terrorist, the Gantelis, and the Hydralist shields, there are a, there's a certain combination of Proper shots and Replac shots that you want to use to efficiently take down the shield. Um, so we'll have a look at that when we come to the run. Um, but I also do want to point out at this point that I am not using any macros on keyboard or mouse for this run. I know a lot of people don't have access to those kind of tools. So we are not going to be using macros to, you know, increase our shot speed from when we fire our amp or anything like that. We're just going to be doing it, you know, without any assistance whatsoever. Um, that's very important to note. And then for our amp arcanes, we've got Eternal Eradicate on here and Eternal Onslaught. By far the best two amps, right? Uh, amp arcanes right now. If you don't have access to a amp uh, arcane adapter, which you get from the Zaraman, uh, then again, I would recommend getting to that point. It's very useful. However, uh, in that event, I would highly prioritize Eternal Onslaught over Eternal Eradicate. So run Eternal Onslaught until you can get Eternal Eradicate alongside it. Um, you should still be able to do six cap. I imagine you might just have to throw in a few more uh, amp shots in order to take down perhaps the hydradish shields. Um, we'll have to see. So yeah, that's kind of uh, that's kind of all I want to say for this. What I'm going to do before we get into the run is that we're going to take a quick kind of uh, a quick overview of a run, um, and then we'll do the commentated run itself, uh, and I'll kind of talk you guys through it as we go. Uh, and then if you have any questions, you can obviously throw those down in the comments below. So. Let's head into the planes and just have a quick chat about what an Eidolon hunt involves. 
So for those of you in the know, this is going to be a bit boring, so you can skip forward to the commentated run if you want, but I'm just going to explain basically the kind of movement and different stages of the Eidolon hunts that we're going to be running through. So in any Eidolon hunt, or Tridolon, we're going to call them, uh, you're going to be taking down a Terralist, you're going to be taking down a Gantalist, and you're going to be taking down a Hydralist. So for each of those, you are going to need a set number of charged Eidolon lures, which you can pick up from Grenier camps around the map. For the Terralist, you're going to need two charged lures. For the Gantalist, you need three. And for the Hydralist, you need another three. So in total, you're going to need eight charged Eidolon lures. And we're going to be picking up pretty much all of those, or we are going to be picking up all of those, before the Terralist is captured. Um, and we'll explain that as we go in the commentated run. Let me just take down this here, Dargan. Whoops. Whatever. <laughs> all right, so... To begin with, we'll do our fast charge. If you haven't seen the video uh, or guide on that, uh, then do go and have a look. Like I said, I'll leave it down in the description. Um, and then, yeah, we'll head straight over to the Terrorist. Whilst we are taking down the Terrorist's Synovia, we're going to gather two more lures and bring those over. Uh, and we're going to park those underneath the Eidolon and we're going to put down our uncle crewmate with the Tenet Cycron, get him to hold position. He's going to take out any Vonvalists that spawn around the Eidolon and help charge the lures, and that's his basically the only thing he's going to do. Um, following that, as soon as the Eidolon goes into what we call the down phase, so we've taken out all the Synovia, the Eidolon will go down and start calling Vonvalists. During that phase, we are going to go ahead and collect the remainder of the five lures. Now, we're not going to use any ciphers for this point. The only cipher we're ever going to use is for the first lure to get the quick charge. The rest, we're going to just ignore. Um, so if you're not confident at hacking, then, you know, you can go and practice on spy missions or whatever, or you can just use more ciphers. It's up to you. So once we've got all five lures, we're then going to come back to the terror list, and we're going to wait around until all of the three lures that we previously parked there are charged, at which point we'll grab those, get any more Vomvalists in the current lures that we have, and then we're going to fly over to Garatot Lake, where we're going to spawn in our Gantalist. So when you come over... Before you go ahead and over to the shrine, as Vault, you can go ahead and put down some uh, what we call pre-shields. So in preparation for when the Gantalist or Hydralist spawns. So the first spot you can pre-shield is close spawn, which is this one right here. Uh, if you want to get a better idea of kind of where this is, I'll just kind of zoom out. Uh, I kind of like to, to mark it by this kind of V in the water right here. Um, and you can kind of base yourself off the rock to the right and the tree. That'll help you know where you are. Um, the second spawn is left spawn, that's this one right here. You can just put it sort of towards the end of this little outcrop in the water. The third is mid spawn, that's this one over here. And the last is long spawn. We're not going to use a shield for long spawn because we don't have the zenith, which means that we're going to have to wait for the Eidolon to emerge anyway, and we'll have plenty of time to put the shield down during that time. So we'll put the shield down like here, the Eidolon emerges, We'll go ahead and take down the shield. Die. Die. Um, and then, yeah, we'll be able to just carry on and, and take the Eidolon out as normal. And then, yeah, that's kind of the fight, guys. So, basically, the only other mechanics that you kind of need to know about before we get into the commentated run are going to be walking. So, walking an Eidolon, by that I mean you are shooting specific Synovia in order to push the Eidolon one way or the other. So if you're facing an Eidolon and you shoot a Synovia on your left-hand side, the Eidolon will go to the right and vice versa. So if you shoot a Synovia on the right, it will go left. This is really important when you're doing your sixth Hydralist. If you are a bit short of time and it's sort of coming towards day, you need to be able to walk your Eidolon away from a patch of water where it will despawn uh, if it becomes day um, by shooting the Synovia. And unfortunately, we're not going to have time to kind of go into that in this video, but I might make another video exploring, you know, and just sort of talking you through the different ways you can walk the Eidolon away from the different spawn points. Um, and yeah, hopefully that will come out relatively soon. We'll see. Um, but yeah, without further ado, I think we'll probably just jump straight into uh, the commentated run and I'll go into a bit more detail then about what kind of combinations you want to be using for your proper amp and your replac amp to take down the shields and why. So let's take a look, guys. All right, so we're just coming into the planes here. We're going to do our fast charge, and then we're going to head straight over to the Terralist. Once we set down at the Terralist, we'll go ahead and put a few buffs on, however many we can afford to put on in the time we have. And then we're going to go ahead and fire off three proper shots using our Void Strike, which is the first ability in Operator. In order to take down the first shield, we're going to switch instantly over into our Warframe and then take out the first Synovia. 
So once we've done that, we're going to then go on this endless kind of loop with the Terrorist here for his shields. We're then going to be able to put down our um, on-call crewmate and put him on hold and then go ahead and gather our first few lures. So let's put our first lure on hold right there. Put a shield down ready for our next shot. Throw down our on-call crewmate, put him on hold and then go into operator to avoid the Eidolon's energy spike. I'm then going to do a few dashes, make sure that my, uh, my melee weapon is out. Put two shots of Proper up and then instantly switch to the Rubico in order to take out the first limb. We'll then gather our first lure up, head back, and then we're going to do exactly the same thing. Three dashes into the floor, use our uh, melee weapon, use a few of our second uh, abilities on our operator. As you can see there, I fired slightly too early, so the first Proper shot didn't hit, but the second one did, which is why we do it. Uh, let's gather our second lure. Once again, we'll head back. We've now got our Void Strike back up, so we can go ahead and use that. And there we go. Another instant takedown. Now we're going to park our lures underneath the Eidolon. Get into our Arcwing and go ahead and gather the rest of our lures. So, you will learn to know where the lures are after a while. Um, it is just practice. Um, but there are a few spots where two spawn, such as um, this little island in the middle here, which I forget the name of now. I think it's Hex Stiletto. Um, and yeah, we're just going to go around, gather up the rest of our lures. Our uncle crewmate is still over by the Eidolon, so we don't have to worry about getting back before he stands up. Um, once we're over there, you will see that the uncle crewmate happily just kind of sweeps up the remainder of the Vonvalists. We can get down and all of the lures are charged. We'll drag the remainder of our lures underneath, switch to our nail with all our buffs on, and just hammer it like that. Very nice. So now, as we said before, we're going to head over to the lake, put down our pre-shields. And once we've done that, we'll head over to the shrine, and we'll put in our first, uh, first shard. And then as soon as we hit the water where the Eidolon spawned, we'll put on our Void Strike, and we'll use our Replac to take out the shield on the Eidolon. It can take one or two shots. So two shots, switch to the Rubico and shoot the limb. Right here, we're going to use our Sarper. We're going to reduce the armor on the uh, Gantelis, so a couple shots should be fine. And we're going to do exactly the same thing as we did with the Terrorist for this one. And I'll explain why. Um, so if you are running a macro, then it is worth, um, it's worth doing a Replac shot as well. And then if you obviously have the macro set up, you can instantly swap to your weapon to take out the limb. Um, but for us, by the time we've actually transferred out, it's uh, just as much time as the second shot takes to detonate. Um, so as soon as we've got into our back into our Warframe, the second shot will have detonated already. Uh, so it makes no odds. Um, the reason that sometimes you will take the shield down in one proper shot rather than two is that sometimes you do hit those orange crits on your amp. Uh, which will allow you to take it down in one. You see right there, we can use Void Strike as well. Um, so yeah, be aware of that. Uh, and yeah, just have a look out for Vonvalis as you go. And it's kind of just a repetitive cycle from here on out, guys. So, you know, when the uh, the Gantelist or Hydrus is doing its energy strike, you do your three dashes into the ground. Make sure that you are using up all of your operator energy to proc Eternal Eradicate and Eternal Onslaught correctly. Um, and then you can just, you know, shred the shields completely. So three dashes, use our Sarpa. Get those uh, energy waves on it. And then, yeah, if the first shot doesn't kill it, the second one will. You can then come over, mop up the uh, the Vonvalists underneath the Gantelist using your Proper. And then you want to go and hunt for some more Vonvalists. Now here we get a bit unlucky. Uh, or either that or I'm being completely blind. I don't know which. I can't really tell because it's raining. Uh, but, you know, if you don't spot any uh, too quickly, go ahead and look for a different spot for Vonvalists. Uh, you can see here we get some spawn on the right, uh, which we do just have about enough time to gather. So we're going to go ahead and get those, and then we'll head straight back to the Gantelist for when he stands up. We can then mop up any Vonvalists that spawn underneath him. Make sure that your Nell is fully loaded and ready to go. And then we'll go ahead and take down the Gantelist like so. Clean up any other Vonvalists and pre-shield exactly the same as you did for Terrorist.
So we're going to wait over at Shrine. We're going to do exactly the same thing. I think we get a mid spawn here. So we'll fly over, hit the hit the deck, put on our Void Strike, and then we will go ahead and just instantly take out the limb. We're going to push him to the right on mid spawn. Like so. Now, for the Hydra list, our amp shots are slightly different. We are going to have to use the Replac in order to guarantee a shield takedown. So we're going to do three dashes, Sarpa, Void Waves, and then two Propa and one Replac. And then instantly swap and take out the limb. So same again. I'm putting two shields down here just to be safe, by the way. Uh, you can get away with one, but I like to be safe. <laughs> so two proper, one replac, switch and shoot. And right here we have Void Strike back up. Unfortunately, I uh, do a bit of a mistake here. I want to shoot the top limb right now, the one on the arm, but I miss it, as you can see. Uh, but it's fine. We lose a couple seconds to that in a moment, but not too shabby at all. So again, three dashes, get your Sarper out, Void Waves, make sure you've run out of energy, two Propers, Replac, and shoot. We actually missed one of the multi-shots there, which is why we didn't get it in one. Make sure to keep your buffs up nice and high. Three dashes, Sarper, Void Waves. As you can see there, the hitbox is a bit buggy. Which is why I wanted to get it earlier. And I'm just going to mop up the Vonvalists here. Because it can affect the Eidolon's health when we come to kill it. Or capture it. And that's kind of it guys. So you can see we've got three charged lures now. And we're ready to kill our Hydras. Which we're going to do in exactly the same way as we did the Gantelis. But we can use our Void Strike now as we've not got it. Uh, we've not got to take down the first shield of another Eidolon fortunately. So yeah we can just throw everything at this one to kill it instantly. Um, but yeah, hopefully this was uh, informative at the very least. You guys perhaps enjoyed watching it and found it interesting. If you have any questions or you have anything that obviously you're not too sure about or you'd like me to go into a bit more depth on, uh, then do let me know down in the comments. I'd be happy to go over it. Um, and yeah, if you did like, please leave a like and subscribe. And I will catch you in the next one, guys. Thanks for watching.